We don't get a lot of these Lexus LX470s. Uh, this particular car is a 2004 Lexus LX470 and it's done 197,000 kilometres since new. Every single service ever carried out on this vehicle has been done at a Lexus dealership. And it's actually the update series. So it's got the much newer five speed automatic transmission which replaced the four speed and it's got basically got an all new dash. Other features included Bluetooth and reverse camera. It's got the 4.7 litre V8 engine. It's got three keys. I have driven it, it drives perfectly. I must have been, I do actually own one myself. It's in the background there. We'll start this up. So there's your reverse camera there. It's got climate control, navigation, Bluetooth. So they basically came with all the bells and whistles. It's even got a fridge, which works well if you're on a long trip and you put some cold drinks in there. It's fantastic. The other good thing about these is you've got absolute luxury and absolute reliability, yet you've got a centre differential, and you've got high range and low range. And at the click of a button, you can raise and lower the car by about a foot, which is pretty impressive and make these very capable off-road. I do use my car off-road. Uh, the car also has what's called an A-Track system. So it's got limited slip diffs, it's got a centre locking diff and it's got a limited slip diff at the front and the back and a viscous coupling. And basically if you get into trouble, um, A-Track will find the wheel or wheels with traction and will put power to that wheel. If you're in a very sticky situation, all the wheels start spinning. it actually locks up the front and rear diffs, getting, making all four wheels spin at the same time. It's got a three and a half ton towing capacity. I can tell you they're absolutely reliable because I've had a couple of them. I had one as a matter of fact um, about 10 years ago and I sold it at the time with 460,000 kilometers. It was sold to someone in my local area who's still driving it around and I think it's got about six, six to 700,000 kilometres now, so it's pretty impressive. Now, so it's got a 4.7 litre V8 engine, which does use quite a bit of fuel. On the freeway, I can get my car down to about 11 litres per 100 kilometres, and around town, I can get about 17 or 18 litres per 100 kilometres. A lot of people talk about the fact that they, they use a lot of fuel, which may be true. But fuel is very cheap if you're comparing it to you know, repairing a four-wheel drive. If you look at, um, say, English four-wheel drives, which have air suspension and a number of other issues, if you have to change, say, a suspension compressor, there's $1,500. That's a lot of fuel. The resale on these is very good. As it was built on the Sahara, there really is a following for them. And a lot of people who bought these new have actually held on to them, according to the Lexus dealership where I sell my, uh, service my car. Um, a lot of the owners who've had them have held on to them and they've now got three, 400,000 kilometres. And the reason why they haven't sold them is because they're, they're not having any issues. Probably the only major service on these cars really is at about 160,000 k's where you have a timing belt. Other than that it's simply just your, your normal oil changes and brakes and tyres and things. They're about $140,000 when they were new. 
and they came with so many more extras than probably any other four-wheel drive at the time. It was one of the first cars on the road to have Xenon high beams, along with all the other features I talked about, like your suspension at the moment, it's on the lower setting. I will put the suspension up so you can, so you can see. But probably what's most impressive about this car is the exterior, I will say. Because it's an eight-seater family car, this is a 2004 model, so it's been around, it's been around for about 12 years. And if you've had a, if it's an eight-seater and you've had a family of six or eight in and out of it over that time, you're going to expect there to be quite a bit of wear. Little dings, scrapes, scratches, etc. This is not one of those cars. If you've looked at five, six, seven of these LX470s, all Land Cruisers, and you've been very disappointed by the condition, please come and have a look at this car. And if you have been looking at Saharas, I would definitely come and have a look at this because for some reason people think that being a Lexus it's going to cost more to maintain or more to run. It's incorrect. It's got exactly the same engine and transmission as a Sahara. And if you want to service at Toyota, you can. So I've just put the suspension up. So you can see how much of a difference it makes. It's very impressive. It's got an independent front end, um, which make it car-like to drive. And it's got what's called a live axle rear end. So if you look under the car, you'll see you've got, it's hard to see there actually with that light, but you've basically got one axle along the back. It comes in this beautiful pearl color. Uh, mine's silver. And uh, I actually prefer this colour to mine. It's got the f original Dunlop Grand Trek tyres on it. So they were the tyres that were sold on it from brand new. Not the actual tyres, obviously. It's had various tyre changes over that period, but they're the same brand and, and style. The tow bar was an option, and most people got it. Because a three and a half tonne towing capacity is, is very good. Especially if you've got a horse float or a boat, whatever it might be. But if you're looking for absolute reliability and, you, and uh, for a family car for around $30,000, you just can't go past a Lexus LX470. And I'm speaking from personal experience. And I have had other four wheel drives, I will say it, including Range Rovers. And needless to say, that's, that's why I've gone back to a Lexus. I will finish by saying there was a test done in the US, and probably find it on the internet, it was comparing the 2016 LX570 to an LX470 in this colour as a matter of fact. And they said in the review that in the US you can buy one of these for about $25,000, and the new one is about $90,000, and they said they couldn't justify spending the extra money. In Australia, like this car we're talking about, we're talking about $30,000, and brand new, you'd be spending about $169,000. So that makes this even better value. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch our video. If you have any questions if you, on this car whatsoever, please feel free to ask. I hope that I can answer any questions you may have after you know, owning a couple myself, um, whether it's full drive capabilities, towing, whatever it may be. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for watching and we look forward to hearing from you.